In this tutorial, we'll show you some basic editing functions in Cool and how to use them to build our first Quake level. Our first level will be a simple one. It will be a cubic room. We start by creating a new map. We click on the New File button in the toolbar window. Now to create the cubic room. We need six brushes for the bounding walls. One way to do this is to add six brushes into our map individually and place them into the right positions by hand. We need to resize each of the brushes into the exact shape we need them and make sure the adjacent brushes are touching so there won't be any gaps. We can go through all this work or we can use the hollow function that Cool provides. First we click the right mouse button, go to add brush and add a medium cube at the center of our map. This will be the outer boundaries of our room. We can adjust the size of this cube by using the resize mode. We can go up to the mode menu and select object scale or press the scale button in the toolbar window. We then move the mouse over the cube in the top view window. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse to the right and up. Now we have widened the room in both X and Y directions. We also need to increase its height. We go down to either the back or the side window, place the mouse over the cube, hold down the left button, and drag the mouse up. Whenever we add a new brush into our Quake map, Cool will use the highlighted texture in the texture window and apply to it all the faces of our new brush. The texture used by the new brush will be displayed in the object window. If this is not the texture we want, we can scroll down the texture window and select a new texture. We then right click on the texture and select the apply command. This will apply the new texture to all the faces of our cube. We now have one huge solid block in our map. To make it into an actual room, we can carve out the middle portion of our solid block by using the hollow function. We go up to the edit menu and select the hollow command. Now we can see all the six bounding brushes that make up the actual room. Before this level is completed, we need to specify in the map the position where the player will start. We do this by adding a player start entity. We right mouse click inside the editing window, go to add entity, then go to player, and select start. This will put a player model in our map. We can move the player into position by first going into move mode either through the mode menu, or through the move button in the toolbar window. Then we place the mouse over the player in the top view window. Click the left mouse button and drag the player back. We then place the mouse over the player again in either the back or side window. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the player down to the floor. We can get a quick preview of our room by clicking on the render button in our toolbar window and selecting either solid or texture. We can enlarge our view by going to zoom mode. Place the mouse inside the 3D view window hold down the left button and drag the mouse forward. We can also rotate our 3D view by selecting the I rotate mode. Left click the mouse and drag it in any direction. We can also change our eye position by going to the I move mode. Hold down the left button and drag the mouse in any direction. When we're done previewing we can go back to the wireframe rendering mode. Say we didn't like the room and we want to reposition it in the map. We can go back to the object move mode. Before we can move the room again or do any other operations to it, we need to select the room first. We place the mouse over the room in any of the windows and left click the mouse until the room becomes red. Then we can move the room to a new position. If we want to go back and work on the player start position, we can reselect the player entity using the same method. Place a mouse over the player and left click the mouse until the player entity becomes red again. Finally, before we can look at our first level in Quake, we need to compile our map into a binary format called BSP that Quake understands. We go to the File menu and select the command Export to BSP. As shown here, there are three programs that will help us to convert our map. QBSP.exe, Light.exe, and viz.exe. QBSP converts our map into the .bsp format used by Quake. Light adds the lighting information to our level, and viz is used to optimize our level to improve Quake's performance. Since we haven't added any lighting information yet, 
We'll only be using QBSP for this level. We need to make sure the path to the QBSP program is correct here. If QBSP is not in the default directory, or that we're using a different version of QBSP, we can change the path to the program here. We also need to specify the path to Quake. If this isn't the right path, we can change it here. When all these paths are entered correctly, we check the Run QBSP and Run Quake options. We then click on the Go button to compile our map and look at it in Quake.